Sometimes it's hard to know something what God really means when he asks you to do something. I've been struggling with something all day, whether to do one or two things. And now I think I know why. Because if we're going to receive the blessings of God, if we're going to have to going to receive the promises that God gave us, we have to understand that we have to believe what God said. And God has said many, many things. He has made many promises to us. In fact, somebody who I think must be a little obsessive compulsive wrote down all the promises in the Bible. And it's apparent that there are 8,810 promises in the Bible. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to repeat them all here for you tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And off those, and off those promises. Thank you, Bill. And off those promises, 7,487 of them were made by God to man. Wow. And all of them have been true, except those that have not yet come to pass. And we sometimes get focused on certain promises, such as John 3.16, for instance. And we get focused on that one promise and forget some of the other ones in the Bible. For instance, it says in Isaiah that strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong. Do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With the recompense of God, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. That was back in the days of Isaiah hundreds of years before Christ was born. Then we read in Matthew that great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, the blind, the mute, the maimed, and many others, and they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed all of them. So the multitude marveled when they saw the mute speak, the maimed made whole, the lame walking, the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. We often don't see anything like that today. And people often wonder, does God really answer our prayers? People often pray and don't seem to get answers. But perhaps the problem is that God has made many promises to us and kept them. Do we make promises to God and not keep them? How many times have you heard people say, if God gives me a job, I'll do this. Or if God heals us, I'll do this. Or after a car accident, oh God, just help my son or my daughter or my, and I'll do this. I'll go to church, I'll give to the church, I'll do missions, I'll do whatever. Take this illness away from me and I'll stop drinking, I'll stop smoking, I'll stop doing. And it lasts for a few weeks. And then it goes. God has made covenants and vows and promises to us. But when we say that to him, we're making a promise and a vow to him. And we often don't keep it. Deuteronomy 23 is listed, lists all the blessings that you get by keeping the commandments and the ordinances of God. And we often look at that. But we only look at the first 15 verses. We don't look at the verses that come after that, which show the curses that can happen when you don't keep yeah. the covenants of God. 
It says in it says in John, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. But we don't read the next verse. If you love me yes. and keep my commandments. Yes. One of the problems we do when we make a promise is we make a vow. And we often swear by God on the Bible, I will promise to do this. Instead of just letting our word be yes or no mm -hmm. and leaving it at that. Mm -hmm. It says in Leviticus, you shall not swear by my name falsely. When, and in, the, in Deuteronomy 23, when you make a vow to the Lord, you shall not delay to pay it. For the Lord your God will require it of you. But if you do not vow, it will not be a sin. So we must be careful when we make a promise that we keep it, especially to God. And today, many people make promises that they never seem to keep or intend to keep. In the older days, vows were much more important and dealt with much more rigorously than they are today. Back in Judges 11, 11 there was the story of Jephthah, who was a soldier, the son of a harlot, and he was driven away from his family because of this. But when war with Ammon came against Israel, Jephthah was called back to fight. He made a vow that if the forces of Ammon would be, that would be led into his hands, that he would sacrifice as a burnt offering the first thing that came up to meet him when he came home. This was a vow he made to God. But well, the forces of Ammon were sent into his hands and they were defeated. But when Ammon came home, the first thing that came out to meet him was his daughter. In those days, a vow was a vow. And it turned out that he carried the vow out, much to everyone's chagrin much to what we would consider unpardonable or unthinkable today. The story in Matthew of Ananias and Sephora, who promised to sell land and give the proceeds to the church, to the Holy Spirit. They did that, but they kept a portion back for themselves. The story is that before the day was out, they were both dead. How many times do things happen to us because we break our covenants with God even though he keeps his with us? How many times do we make promises that we should keep and yet don't? Everybody has to think of themselves and what they've said themselves and what they've done themselves because I know we've all done it who said we'd do things and not follow through. How much illness, how many difficulties do we encounter because we make a promise to God and don't keep it? I don't know the answer to that. But I do know it's something we all should think about. <laughs>